Hello, I'm Greg Lamb with the Slater Group. In this video, I'm going to give you an overview of the US edition of Xero. This will be a two-part review. In the first part, I'll give you an introduction to Xero, explore the banking and reconciliation functionality, and show you how to navigate around the software. In the second video, I'll cover sales and purchasing, getting data in and out, add-ons, reports, sales taxes, and give a summary of what I think about Xero. Let's start off with Xero the company. While Xero may seem new to those in North America, it was founded in 2006, so it's been around for quite a while. Xero started off as online accounting software. In other words, it was born in the cloud for use in the cloud. Does this matter though? Well, to some extent, yes, since the technology and design used in the software was optimized for the web. For example, here are some things I've noticed. The website's reliability is very good. Sure, I've seen it lag here and there, but overall, I have always been able to count on Xero being up and accessible. In the three countries, various browsers, and various platforms I've tried, including desktop and mobile, PCs and Macs, iOS and Android, Safari and Chrome, I've never had problems accessing Xero. Sharing my Xero data or viewing others' Xero data is both free and easy. There are no limitations on users who can view or access data. Xero has a large ecosystem of add-ons that work with it, like e-commerce and payment processors. Another aspect of being born in the cloud is that Xero has a global code base. What in the world do I mean by that, though? Well, there's this global edition of Xero. Anyone can get this. But some countries have localizations, like Australia, New Zealand, the United Kingdom, and the United States. Those localized editions have extra features on top of the global edition. Again, I'm reviewing the United States edition. Something I always check when evaluating online accounting software is whether it has accounting basics, like accrual accounting, good control over the chart of accounts, and the ability to create journal entries. Xero has these basics covered. For small business owners, this means you can use Xero to accurately produce profit and loss and balance sheet reports. In other words, you can use Xero to see how much money your company makes, how much money your company is worth, and how your company achieved that worth. Let me actually get into the software and show you around. This is the dashboard. It feels a bit plain to me, but it gives you quick access to some important areas. Your bank accounts will show up on the left. You can actually change which banks show up and the order of how they show up by going to the banking page. It's nice to have that little bit of control over customization. On the right, you can also customize things by configuring the accounts you'd like to watch. I like to set up my sales tax account so that I can see how much I have owing but you can add or remove any accounts you like by going to the chart of accounts. Below you'll get a snapshot view of sales and purchases. Something I found missing was that Xero doesn't show you the numbers for awaiting payments, or in other words, the invoices that are in good standing but haven't been paid yet. However, you can hover over the bar graph and see, and even click it to find out more details. What I'd recommend though is going directly to the sales or purchases pages themselves as the view is more complete. You see, in the sales page, you can get a quick summary of all your invoices and then click on any area to get more details. I'll actually cover the sales page in the second video though, so let's go back to the dashboard so I can show off what I think is the biggest selling point of Xero. And that is this button right here, the reconcile button. This is what I love about Xero. All your transactions from your bank can be automatically imported if you set up a bank feed. If you can't though, perhaps because there's no feed available for your bank, you do have the option to upload a file of your transactions by using the import statement page. What you're seeing here on the left is transactions found in your bank statement. On the right are transactions found in Xero, or if they're not found in Xero, you have the ability to create new ones. So this is an example of a customer invoice payment showing up in the bank statement. Xero has found the correspondent invoice on the right and shows there's a match by highlighting it in green. To accept the match, we can click on OK, and that's how we reconcile a transaction. Here's a very similar transaction, except it's a vendor bill payment. Xero has again found a match to a bill payment made in Xero. If we want to double check this match though, we can click on Find and Match and see the details. We can actually click on the payment to drill down further into the transaction if we want. This will open up a new tab in the browser with the transaction details. Actually, we can even click on the bill that the payment was made for to see that transaction. I really like that it's so easy to drill down into transactions. But back to reconciling. To accept the match, we click on OK. 
let's deal with transactions that have not been entered into Xero yet. If Xero has seen a similar bank statement transaction before, it'll fill out the information for us on the right. So we only need to click on OK to create the transaction within Xero and match it to the bank statement transaction. I find Xero does a very good job of suggesting transactions to create. However, even though Xero is good, you're free to create your own rules. This suggested transaction has been auto-filled based on a rule created by a user. It says it right here, apply rule 711. To accept the rule, we'd click on OK. But let's check out the rule by clicking on it. You can see that there's a whole bunch of parameters involved with creating the rule. Without getting into the details, I can say that there's a massive amount of control over how rules are created, which means that if you spend a bit of time creating rules, this can automatically categorize a large amount of your future transactions for you. This is cool. Now, if Xero doesn't find a match or can't suggest a transaction for us to create, we can create a transaction ourselves by filling out the form on the right. If we need to put in more information, we simply click on Add Details and get the ability to do so. This is important since this means we don't have to leave this page for more complicated transactions. If we believe there's a match but Xero hasn't found it, we can use Find and Match. This is nice because we can choose to receive money or pay money for multiple invoices or bills at once. I really like how you can use the search on the right to filter the invoices that are shown and use the column headers to sort the results. We can also create new transactions here or add adjustments for things like bank fees over here. You seriously don't need to leave this page for the majority of transactions. Yeah, you'll need to leave it for very specific situations like if you have to apply a credit to an invoice, but you can process the vast majority of transactions from this reconciliation page. Now for those with advisor access, you'll have this cash coding tab. This is the spreadsheet version of your bank statement transactions. The cool thing about this is that we can categorize multiple transactions at once. For example, if we sort by payee and then click on the first checkbox, hold shift, then click on the last checkbox, we can select all the central city parking transactions. We can then select the account and all the transactions are filled out. We then only need to click on save and reconcile selected and that's five transactions processed in one shot. While it may seem that I covered processing bank statement transactions in depth, I really only quickly introduced key things I thought were interesting. I'd need to create a video only on banking and reconciliation in order to really explain all the ins and outs. What I did want to show was that there's so much flexibility and power built in. It's good though, because I find navigating around Xero not to be quite as fantastic. All the navigation in Xero stems from this top menu bar. Probably the menu item you'll use most is accounts. You can see all your bank accounts here. Sales is Xero's name for invoicing or accounts receivable by the way, and purchases is Xero's name for billing or accounts payable. The other menu items, as you can see, are payroll, reports, contacts, and settings. If you have advisor access, you'll see this additional advisor tab. And then to the right, you'll see this folder icon, which is the files pages where you can attach documents, the mail icon, which displays messages from Xero, and then the question mark icon, where you can access help and support. Even after using Xero for a while, I still find the navigation to be a bit cumbersome. Let me try and explain by going back to the dashboard. So here's the bank account. If you click on manage account, you can see that you have the options to spend money, receive money, and transfer money. But then over here, you have money coming in, or sales, money going out, or purchases, and expense claims. But then if we click on accounts, you'll see there's another option, checks. So there's a whole bunch of places to click for money going in and out of your business. There are also options that I haven't shown for things like credit notes. And when you spend money or receive money, you also have the option to do so as a direct payment, prepayment, and overpayment. All these options accessed through different ways can really make it confusing for beginners. It all makes sense once you learn how the software works and the variability lets you account for the many ways money goes in and out of zero. However, if you look at my review of QuickBooks Online, they have a one-click create menu button that lets you access all transaction types in one place, which I find to be so much more straightforward. But luckily, Xero does have some great help and support. Xero recently updated their help feature so that when you type in a search, like sales, it'll show results from a variety of sources. I like this, since I can only search for official user guide answers if I want. 
Or perhaps I only want to see videos so I can filter the results to show that. If I can't find any good official answers, especially if I'm looking to see if Zero has a feature or not, I find the community is a great place to look. But if the search results don't answer your question, you can contact support. Something that you should know is that it's mostly email based. So if you fill out this form, it'll send an email. There's no live chat or phone calls. Although, if you're an accountant professional, you would have a Zero representative you could contact directly. If you're not so comfortable with not being able to pick up the phone and talk to a real human being, I should mention that I've used their email-based support on a few occasions and I've found the help to always be timely and knowledgeable. Emails are supposed to be routed to the people best able to answer your questions, so I'm willing to give up phone or live chat support if email gives me better answers because they go to the right people. And like I said, I've found nothing to complain about so far. Okay, so I'll end this video here. In part two, I'll discuss things like sales and purchases, getting data in and out, add-ons, reports, sales taxes, and in general, give a summary of what I think about Zero as a whole.